Thank you. So, Governor, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to you, Chair Strauss, and to you, Chair Bonfari, and to the members of the committee. We appreciate this chance to testify before you on behalf of House 4002, an act authorizing and accelerating transportation investment here in the Commonwealth. I'm joined today, as you mentioned, by Mass DOT Secretary and CEO Stephanie Pollack, MBTA General Manager Steve Poptak, Highway Administrator Jonathan Gulliver, and other members of the Mass Department of Transportation and the Executive Office of Administration and Finance. We want to thank you for your support of our shared goal of a safe, reliable, and sustainable transportation system. The $18 billion transportation plan we filed will continue the evolution of our transportation system that our transportation system is currently undergoing. Beyond containing resources enough to meet the anticipated needs of the next half decade and in some cases beyond, this bill will accelerate the initiatives already underway to modernize our transportation system, invest half a billion dollars in our municipal partners as they develop the transportation systems necessary to meet their needs, Reduce, reduce greenhouse gas impact and improve the real resiliency of our transportation networks, propose new tools to manage regional and local traffic congestion, and perhaps most importantly, address barriers to innovation, which will allow us to accelerate the delivery of these very necessary projects. As we enter the second de decade of Mass DOT, the agency was formed, as you may recall, by the legislature in 2009 just wanted to spend a minute considering what the Commonwealth accomplished during this first decade. The state finished the first accelerated bridge program, which included an award-winning renovation of the historic Longfellow Bridge, Worcester Signature Burns Bridge, which was also an American Public Works Association Project of the Year winner, and the Braga and Four River Bridges, and turned what would have been a hellish three years into a hellish three weeks by using accelerated techniques to finish the Commonwealth Bad Bridge in three weeks over the course of two summers, instead of building it in the traditional way and disrupting traffic for years. We also completed the transition to an all-electronic tolling system, becoming the first system in the nation to switch to an entirely cashless system, banishing the toll clauses that cause congestion, and in some cases, accidents. Developed and successfully launched the Municipal Small Bridge Program with your legislative support, providing crucial funding to local-owned bridges across the Commonwealth, 93 of which so far have gone through the program, further demonstrating our commitment to improving local infrastructure. When coupled with the Complete Streets Program, these programs provide a suite of options for local communities to improve their transportation infrastructure in ways that make sense for them while meeting state goals for asset condition and multimodal transportation. MassDOT and the MBTA rescued the Green Line Extension Project, turning a project that was a billion dollars over budget and falling further and further behind schedule into a reality, much the same way that the long-promised but never delivered South Coast Rail Project is today under construction and will connect Fall River and New Bedford to Boston and vice versa by 2023. Also by 2023, the entire fleet of orange and red line cars will be new, Doubling <coughs> an additional 80,000 seats on the red and orange lines with a $217 million investment in new signals will allow for 30,000 extra passengers per hour during rush hour with three minutes instead of four and a half minute headways. The Mass DOT and MBTA capital plans reflect this acceleration as well. The fiscal year 17 five year capital plan called for a $15 billion investment in Mass DOT and MBTA infrastructure. The most recent five-year plan covering the years fiscal 24 to 20 to 24 projects spending 18.3 billion, obviously significantly more. The MBTA is investing more in the system than ever before. The team went from failing to spend half of the money it had available for infrastructure upgrades to achieving $1 billion in capital spending for the first time in fiscal 19. Their five-year plans have gone from 3.8 billion in the fiscal 14 to 18 period to 8.2 billion planned for the FY20 to 24 period. I think it's important to stress here that this capital plan and the massive growth and activity it entails can be completely executed with the funding that's currently available to them. That includes all the new vehicles for the entire orange and red line, track and signal rebuilds on every line, hundreds of new buses, thousands of new trips on the commuter rail, and thousands of new seats on the subway all while launching new services for more riders across the system. 
MassDOT, the MBTA's investment strategy, is focused on delivering the benefits of a revitalized and resilient transportation system to residents across the Commonwealth, while also advancing projects that expand the reach of transit and target traffic bottlenecks. Both are making up for lost time with deferred maintenance, while investing in new capacity and dramatically improving system reliability. Our commission report on the future of transportation and our congestion report are roadmaps, and our draft plans for the future of the MBTA and our commuter rail system lay out strategies to continue to enhance and expand our public transportation assets for the next 20 years. This $18 billion transportation plan lays the groundwork for a transportation system that will meet the future travel needs of our residents and support a strong and competitive economy. The administration is also committed to addressing the 40% of greenhouse gas emissions that come from the transportation sector. To that end, we're participating in a coalition of 13 Northeast and Mid-Atlantic states in the District of Columbia in the Transportation and Climate Initiative. Like the REGI program before it, TCI will create a lowering cap on greenhouse gas emissions. The legislation before you today earmarks up to half of the revenue generated by the sale of greenhouse gas allowances toward improving transit, investing in the transit system, which takes more drivers off the road and lowers emissions even further. I'm proud to say that several business sector associations, such as the Associated Industries of Mass, as well as the Environmental League of Massachusetts, have joined together to support this approach. It's not every day these groups find common ground. The congestion report released earlier this summer looked both backward and forward. We didn't need to spend months and months to conclude that yes, transit congestion is bad here, has been getting worse, and will likely get worse as the greater Boston region continues to grow. But it also pointed out that this is a statewide issue in many communities across the Commonwealth. From those months emerged work that proposed targeted solutions that MassDOT is already beginning to implement, some of which are also reflected in this legislation. Modeling a new federal program and our own targeted success in places like the Middleborough Rotary, we're proposing a local bottleneck program targeted at municipally owned infrastructure that creates localized congestion that impacts one portion of a trip. We also found that Massachusetts lags behind similar sized and technology focused cities in the percentage of employees who telecommute. <coughs> we designed a targeted tax credit to encourage businesses to get more of their employees off the road for one or more days per week. The report also calls for moving forward with managed lanes, which provide additional capacity and a faster trip at a cost, which has been successful at increasing throughput and reducing congestion in other parts of the country. Other parts of this legislation will make it easier for MassDOT and the MBTA to work with private parties to partner on large projects, as well as expedite capital delivery, which would allow us to create lanes like these using techniques used in other states. Done right, these lanes give a quicker trip to the people paying for the lane, as well as other users in buses and van pools, and also the drivers in the regular lanes who don't have to deal with the traffic that's now moved into the managed lanes. This bond bill also contains the first down payment on the future rail system being planned in the rail vision process. The future of the commuter rail will require more capacity. This bill supports the purchase of over 200 new MBTA bi-level coaches in addition to the 80 the MBTA ordered last week, bringing the total new seats coming to the commuter rail system to 18,000. And while the T is critical to keeping Eastern and Central Mass moving, we have to continue to remember the vast majority of travel in Massachusetts takes place on state and local roads. To that end, this bill contains $10 billion for Mass DOT highway construction projects, pavement, and bridge repairs. Building on the lessons learned during the previous Accelerator Bridge Program, we're proposing a next generation bridge financing program, which will support $1.25 billion in new bridge construction and enable new procurement techniques to bundle a number of smaller bridges together. As the old ADP phases out, this next generation program will replace it and help us reach our goals for bridge condition. If this program exceeds your support, the percentage of bridge deck in poor condition in Massachusetts will go down from about 17% in 2014 to 10% in 2026. Pavement condition will also benefit from the funding provided in this bill, helping MassDOT achieve over 60% of non-interstate national highway system pavement in good condition by 2023. Finally, we continue to support cities and towns in preparing their roads and bridges for continued growth. 
This legislation contains another installment of $200 million per year in Chapter 90, excuse me, 90 funds. Since taking office, we've awarded $1.1 billion in Chapter 90 funding to all 351 cities and towns, and that doesn't include the supplemental funding we've included in three of the past five years. We've also supported municipal projects in more directed ways. Between the Small Bridge and Complete Streets program projects, we've put out over $75 million into local infrastructure, and this bill expands on our commitment to local roads through new programs, which would award $100 million to improve state numbered but locally owned roads, and a $50 million bottleneck program, which I mentioned earlier. I know this may be counterintuitive to argue at a bond bill here, but funding is actually the easiest of the critical paths that we face. And all the funding in the world won't make a difference if we can't deliver the projects. Secretary Pollack and General Manager Poptak will speak more about this. But we believe the suite of project delivery of improvements that are laid out in this transportation plan is a critical component to ensuring mass DOT and the MBTA to put the $18 billion allocated in this plan to use quickly. Innovative techniques like A plus B bidding which allows us to consider the value of time, as well as the cost of construction, in choosing a bid for a project, or cutting the bureaucratic red tape that slows down cost-saving public-private partnerships and allows the T to take advantage of design, build, finance, operate, and maintain procurement. Techniques that are authorized and used in most states across this country will allow Mass DOT and the T to use the financial resources provided for in this legislation to their fullest and provide new revenues beyond those included already in this bill. As I said when we filed this bill, if the legislature enacts something that resembles this piece of legislation by the end of the session, and we certainly hope you do, Massachusetts will have the biggest arsenal of tools and capabilities it's ever had to make our transportation network safer, cleaner, and better able to service the needs and expectations of our residents and our communities. In some ways, we have enviable problems. Our economy is growing, our population is growing, and the economic activity that dominates our commonwealth is constrained by the limits of our current system. This legislation, along with our housing choice and TNC legislation, and the recommendations in our congestion report, will make it possible for us to create the transportation infrastructure that we will need to continue to grow and serve our people. The financing incorporated in this legislation is unprecedented and historic, and it will be applied in ways that strategically benefit the people, businesses, institutions, and communities of this great state. It adds almost 100,000 seats to our public transportation system and will dramatically improve its reach and reliability. It doubles down on our highly effective large and small bridge initiatives. It fits with our efforts to enhance housing production, density, and transit-oriented development, and provides a path forward to fund additional transit initiatives in resiliency and strategic expansion. We look forward to working with our colleagues in the legislature and the community generally to get this $18 billion plan for our transportation future enacted in this session. And I want to thank you for your support and your work on these critically important issues and give Secretary Pollock and General Man Manager Poptak a chance to give you a few more specifics on this legislation and how the MBTA and Mass DOT and these work resources and long-term planning will help them build the safe, reliable, sustainable transportation system we all expect. Thank you.